Good morning, everybody. How's the conference been? Good? Yeah, nice, cool. All right, so it's great to be in Austin. I'm Ramana Brol, I'm from Tech Mahindra. For those who don't know Tech Mahindra, we are uh, one of the largest service providers um, to media entertainment companies and telecom service providers. Uh, and so why are we here? Um, big reason is we start to see a lot of trend on the AR, VR side, especially from the data explosion perspective. I'm an, and I'm here to explain you the, the main bets we are making, the 343 of it, the three mega trends, the four big bets, and what are the three key areas we are investing in. And then, um, you know, hopefully there'll be some questions. Okay, so the three mega trends that we see across the broadcasting, uh, telecom service providers, um, media companies, over-the-top players, is really that there's digital realities in the world of connecting devices. Um, not only how consumers consume it, but also around the IoT area. And all that is coming together, and why that is important is as more devices uh, proliferate, it has an impact on how the experience is delivered for games on mobile. The second big is the customer engagement. This is the big, big area for AR, VR, not only in gaming, but also in customer experience. I'll give you an example. Um, today, if you have a problem, you call a call center or you do a chat, it's not a great experience. It's, 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 it's kind of like, uh, you know, you have to wait, you have to do all that stuff. They try to divert you to chat or a mobile portal, but we have started to enter into a lot of discussions where customer experience is delivered as an AR, VR. So instead of you calling um, your telecom provider or your uh, cable company, you engage with them in virtual reality. And it, it can start to become much more engaging for you to start working with them. Also, we're looking at um, stores and point of sales where you can start engaging, and also the app stores. So instead of... Uh, you know, just going through your iOS, you can also engage with the app stores as an AR, VR. Um, surge in content consumption. So one of the biggest barriers to entry for gaming on mobile is really the latency. Uh, uh, I don't know if you, how familiar are you with networks, but essentially today, anything that is consumed on mobile goes to something that is called as a CDN, which is back there in the back end, that goes to a core network, and then it comes back to your handset. So what happens is all this round robin creates a huge latency issue, and that results in uh, delay in customer experience. And that's actually the biggest barrier to entry uh, for AR, VR, and gaming on mobile. So in order to ride these mega trends, um, we're doing four big plays. That's the three, four of the three, four, three. First is we're work, working with the game, gaming development community um, and looking at new avenues and enhanced domains. So for example, social media on YouTube, real-time rendering, courtside virtual reality for games, uh, real games, live sports, immersive news, um, new genres, and 360-degree video app. So you know, when the terrible things were happening in Syria, you would see New York Times and other publishers start to do a lot of uh, you know, immersive news. And that trend is only growing. Uh, in fact, we have also partnered with a drone company to help start filming those things. Um, uh, on the other side, the enhanced domains, uh, you bring all those new avenues of AR, VR consumption uh, to three big buckets, which is sports and gaming, news and documentaries, and VR shows and channels. So that's the first big play. The second one is the immersive content revolution. So we look at it, the AR, VR in sports, where I think it's the next best uh, uh, way to consume sports as opposed to uh, TV and devices today. The second is infotainment. Infotainment is huge. You can do travel log. You can do infotainment shows. You can go do a safari in AR, VR. You guys know better than me. I think that there's a lot of use cases just how entertainment is consumed. And then live TV um, you know, and events. So you go to a rock concert or you publish a movie 
and you want to consume after you watch the movie for one hour, two hours, whatever, how do you keep on engaging? So, you know, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, so the season gets over, you gotta wait one year for the next thing to come. So how do you engage with Game of Thrones in the interim? So we're talking to HBO um, to try to see how you start to engage with the previous seasons in a, a virtual reality mode. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, rock concerts, um, you could start telling, selling VR tickets uh, on a live rock concert. Uh, that's also uh, coming up in a big way. The third big play that we are working on, and this is the, the boring, or this is the stuff that most of the gaming community doesn't see, but this is uh, the number one reason uh, why today gaming is not exploding on mobile. And, you know, AR, VR will be consumed on mobile. That will be the number one way people will consume um, virtual reality. The first is, I talked to you about the round, round robin and the latency uh, that creates poor customer experience. So we're building intelligence at the edge. So we're working with companies such as Facebook uh, and big service providers to start to create edge computing so that instead of doing sending stuff to CDNs and the backend systems, you could do compute at the edge, which means if I'm consuming uh, a VR game right now, the compute will happen within a mile of uh, where I'm standing or a couple of miles uh, instead of it going. So there's, that, that's one big uh, investment we're making. Second is agility and flexibility. So how you develop, how do you build the, build the games on the Unity platform? How do you develop it in a DevOps mode? How do you make sure there's a continuous uh, you know, engineering, continuous integration, continuous development? So there's a lot of tools that you need to make the stuff scalable. Uh, because if your game becomes successful in the mobile era, uh, you'll need to make sure that it, the experience doesn't break down when the things go to scale. Um, and all this requires massive investment. So while uh, you know a, a, the service providers and the media companies, not necessarily the profits are rising, you got to do it in a very efficient manner. So we're investing in automation. Uh, you have to do a lot of DevOps, so we're doing a lot of skills-based training, a uh, lot of uh, microservices work to break the monoliths um, and increase time to market. And, uh, of course, uh, we do everything on the cloud, and that is reducing cloud uh, you know, cost to deploy these things. And everybody is now choosing multi-cloud environments, so the big players are not going just with one cloud. They'll probably go with a Google or AWS or Azure or, or one of these guys. And so you need to make sure that instances sitting on various clouds are able to work with each other. And finally, artificial intelligence is here. Um, if your consumer experience is suffering um, or people are not liking the game or they get keep on you know, getting stuck, instead of your end customer opening a ticket or uh, you know, sending a Twitter feed that I, I, you know, this game sucks, um, AI and cognitive can at least solve some of the uh, basic blocking and tackling. Um, so all the microservices will be embedded with AI. Um, so that's a huge work we're doing and all this is become, will become the bedrock on which um, gaming and AR, VR will be consumed. So that, that's gonna be very important. Um, and until this, or a large part of this is done, uh, AR, VR will not be successful uh, the way we all want it to be. Um, finally, uh, uh, you know, while we talk about consumer, and that's the number one use case, don't forget enterprises. Uh, <coughs> today, learning services, uh, uh, need to be revolutionized too. I mean, uh, the, the training and learning is still uh, quite boring. Um, you know, if, if kids today will start playing everything in VR, why would they not learn in VR? And why would enterprises not train their employees in virtual world? Um, the headsets design, we acquired a company called Pininfarina. It's most known for uh, designing Ferraris back in the day. It does industrial design engineering. We use them for a lot of IoT activities. Uh, we're working with them and uh, several other uh, VR uh, headset manufacturers to create um, better design for the headsets because today the you know the design is not so uh, nice. 
apps and content, distribution channel. Uh, we're, for the gaming community, especially small game publishers, we're building a full platform where we can support live operations so that if you have a game and others have a game, the community can come together, we'll help you with the live operations, all the back-end customer support, publishing the game, advertising it, monetizing it, uh, doing dynamic pricing, so in-game pricing or in-time uh, uh, purchase. So if you see something for $9.99 and, and you say, hey, is the price too high, you can give dynamic pricing like Priceline does with the hotel stuff so that you can catch, capture the long tail of customers who, who, who may want to use your content, but they may not have the money to do so. Uh, so we are creating an engagement enabler for enterprises, um, and that's a huge area, um, and actually uh, one of the big use cases that is coming. Um, and finally, the three top priorities. Um, you know, we call them run better, change faster, grow greater. Uh, run better is taking out costs so that you can fund a lot of those investments I talked about in the big bets. Uh, agility, quality, cost, again, it's hyper automation there. We're trying to reduce costs wherever we can. And taking some of the cost reduction and investing in the investments to change to the new world of VR, digital, mobile, edge computer, et cetera. Because like I said, there's no extra dollar coming for those investments. So we have to find the money to fund these things. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the grow greater, which is to help uh, the end customer make more money. So in order for end customers to make more money, um, uh, you know, you gotta offer the stuff like dynamic pricing, deliver better customer experience, reduce latency and bandwidth consumption so that the round robin pings don't happen. Um, and so that, you know, people are able to consume more, sell more, et cetera. We also built a platform where if you've sell, sold a game in Canada, and a community in Canada, let's say, let's say you sold it in Quebec, it's a French community, and people in Paris want to consume it, uh, the service providers can do dynamic licensing, and they can share their license and IP rights and publish it to uh, uh, you know, France, and they can com consume it. Or vice versa, that you know, if there's a community that is going to outside to another area, like an expat community, and there's a very niche game or niche content that you have published in VR, that can be consumed too. Um, uh, and I mentioned about the learning services, those are huge also for us. So I think, uh, you know, it's a lot to chew on, um, but we are investing a lot here. We have uh, labs and center of excellence. You should, if you're a gaming developer, you should talk to us if you want to have a better channel to market to big service providers. We are now creating a portfolio of AR, VR content that we can take to uh, uh, big channels, either over the top or broadcast or mobile. Uh, if you are a gaming enterprise, you should talk to us if you want to harden all your activities. And of course, we're already talking to the service product community to make uh, you know, the data that will explode. Uh, work better. Um, uh, and don't forget the basics that, you know, live operations, in-game problems, uh, customer engagement, payment methods, um, and also advertising your games on iOS um, or any other app store. Uh, make sure that these are ranked and advertised properly. So I think um, with that, I will, uh, you know, pause to take questions if you have any. Um, this area is changing big time, um, and uh, you know it's very dynamic. Uh, but you know we'll be happy to work with this community. We're already a partner with Unity, uh, doing some very interesting things not only in the U.S. but also in uh, Asia, uh, where we have uh, some very strong partnership with them uh, on the platform. Um, but it's all about consumption. It's all about scalability. It's all about delivering your content at the lowest cost to end customers. Um, because if we don't do that, um, it will not fly. It will just, uh, you know, it'll, uh, there'll be tremendous barriers to entry. Um, so I'll stop here um, for questions if you have any.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're kind of bringing it within a few mile radius, your infrastructure cost is going to be so huge. That's true. You're absolutely right. I think it's a good question. So today, they, believe it or not, there are already central offices sitting at the edge, even beyond where the CDNs are. But they're highly, highly inefficient. So we are, what we're doing is we are putting white boxes in there, which can do more compute in the existing central offices. And uh, we're working on an open compute project. It's as part of the telecom infra project of uh, uh, Facebook. And we are going to do it with minimal incremental cost. And all the software will be delivered as a virtual network function, uh, which is through the cloud. So instead of installing everything one by one, all the orchestration is going to happen from the cloud. So that's how we're going to do it. And so you'll push it at the edge. Um, you know, if you go to uh, some of the OTT players, I won't name them, but some of their content is being consumed is in, in Asia, but the CDN is still located in US. Uh, it's, it's really, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really funny. But uh, believe it or not, these are huge barriers to entry. I mean, these, you know, the people don't have business cases to do that. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Any other questions? All right, very good. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.